Hello everyone. In this video tutorial, I will guide you through the steps of creating a production schedule using Schedule Pro. I will start with simple concepts and incrementally introduce more advanced features and capabilities of the tool. If you do not have Schedule Pro installed on your computer, please make sure to download the full functional version from our website at www.intelligen.com so that you can create your own schedules as we go along. Keep in mind that Schedule Pro also ships with six domain-specific examples that describe the advanced capabilities of the tool. The following tutorial corresponds to the example presented in Chapter 4 of the Schedule Pro Manual. It makes use of a simplified version of a batch recipe that was created using Super Pro Designer. This simplified recipe represents the production of a saline solution. Let's have a quick look at that process now. This flow sheet represents our saline production process in Super Pro Designer. This process includes three procedures. The first is the preparation of a solution in a mixing tank. In this procedure, various components are added to the tank. Then they are thoroughly mixed and transferred to the storage tank. Finally, the mixing tank is cleaned in place. The second procedure is storage within a storage tank. Here, the solution from the mixing tank is received and then the filler is fed. Cleaning is done once the storage tank is empty. Finally, in the third procedure, the bags are filled using a filling machine, and then the filler is cleaned afterwards. It is possible to export models created in Super Pro Designer into Schedule Pro. Importing a Super Pro file will automatically create materials, facilities, equipment, and a recipe in your Schedule Pro file. Other resources, such as labor and utilities, will also be imported to Schedule Pro if they exist in your Super Pro file. However, if you don't have a license to Super Pro Designer, or if you are only concerned with the process schedule, you can create recipes directly in Schedule Pro. In this video, I will create the recipe directly in Schedule Pro. Let's take a look at the Schedule Pro interface now. When you open Schedule Pro, the program opens directly to the main working window shown here. It is important to note that recipes created in Schedule Pro make use of facilities and their associated resources. Recipes, facilities, and resources should all be part of the same scheduling project. From a practical point of view, it is more convenient to declare the facility information first, before the declaration of recipes. The reason for this is that recipes make use of resources declared within the facility. The key data in Schedule Pro is mapped to the corresponding nodes of the project tree shown on the left-hand side of the window. You can navigate the tree to find all the information associated with your project. The tree consists of four major data categories. These are recipes, materials, facilities, and the production schedule. Let's begin the model by defining a facility. To do that, first select the Facilities branch of the tree, and then click on the Add New Facility button in the Facilities pane on the right-hand side of the window. This brings up the New Facility dialog where we need to enter a name for our facility. In this example, let's call the facility Medical Solutions Plant. Besides the name, you can optionally provide some descriptive information. Let's click OK to exit this dialog now. Notice how the new facility appears in our facilities list. In addition, if you navigate back to the facilities node of the Explorer tree and click on it, you will now see our newly generated facility. If you expand this facility to reveal its contents, you will see eight different categories of resources. With the exception of equipment, the declaration of all other facility resources is optional. Let's go ahead and define the equipment for this example. We will create four different equipment items for the recipe that we'll be building, three that will be used to carry out the main process, and a fourth, the CIP skid, that will be used during cleaning. To define equipment, first select the Equipment node from the Explorer tree. Then click on the Add New Equipment button in the Equipment pane on the right side of the window. Through the dialog that pops up, we can define our equipment. The first piece of equipment that we need to define is the blending tank. We're going to call this tank MT1. 
Also, you can overwrite the equipment type by simply typing blending tank in the drop-down menu on the right. Finally, you can optionally provide a description of your equipment if you wish. Let's now click OK to exit this dialog. Notice that the newly defined equipment appears in the equipment list. In a similar manner, let's repeat the same process to add the remaining pieces of equipment. The second piece of equipment that we will need to add for this example is a storage tank, which I will call ST101. I will also change the type from vessel to receiver tank. Furthermore, we will need to add a filler, which we can call filler1. Let's also change the vessel type to filler. Finally, we can add our CIP skid. Let's call this CIP skid 1. I will also change the type to CIP skid. If, after creation, you wish to view the properties of the declared equipment, simply select the equipment from the list and click on the Edit Equipment button of the toolbar. Note that double-clicking the equipment item would have also brought up this Equipment Properties dialog box. Through this dialog, you can edit the properties of the equipment and you can add some equipment-specific information. Now that we have added the equipment resources for this example, we can proceed to define the recipe. A recipe in Schedule Pro is a template or description of how to make one batch of something. To add a new recipe, first select the Recipes node of the Explorer tree. Then click on the Create New Recipe button in the Recipes panel on the right side of the window. In the dialog box that pops up, you can enter the name for the recipe. For this example, we'll call the recipe One Liter Bag Recipe. If you wish, you can optionally add some descriptive information about this recipe. Finally, click the OK button in order to add this recipe to the project. It now appears in the recipe table, and it also appears in the Explorer tree under the Recipes node. If, after creating a recipe, you would like to edit some of its properties, you can select it from the Recipes list, and then click on the Edit Recipe button. Through this dialog, you can change the recipe properties at any point in time. For example, to add the batch size and reference material, select the Size tab. Through the Reference Material section, you can specify your reference material. In this example, the reference material is Saline Solution. Furthermore, through the Nominal Size section, you can specify your batch size. For this recipe, let's specify a batch size of 10,000 liters. We can now click OK to save these changes. Notice that the recipe has been updated with the information that we just added. The next step in creating this recipe is to define its unit procedures. A unit procedure in Schedule Pro is defined as a distinct manufacturing step that utilizes at least one primary piece of equipment for its entire duration. For example, a mixing procedure might utilize a blending tank. Unit procedures are further divided into operations that describe distinct subsets in a unit procedure. Operations may require other resources such as labor, materials, utilities, auxiliary equipment, and staff. To add procedures, first select the recipe in the Explorer tree. This brings up the recipe pane on the right side of the screen. From this view, select the Add New Procedure button in order to add a procedure. Notice that a default name, P1, is automatically generated for this procedure. This name could be changed if desired. However, let's accept the default name here and then add a short description of our processing step. We can do this by bringing up the procedure's properties dialog, either by double-clicking on the procedure or by simply selecting it and clicking on the Edit Procedure button. In the dialog box that opens, you can add a description such as Prepare Solution. Let's now click OK to exit this dialog. Notice that the description now appears on the procedures list. Let's repeat the same steps to add the remaining procedures.
As we did before, let's provide a description for each of the procedures by bringing up their properties dialogs. We can describe procedure P2 as store and P3 as fill. Unit procedures also appear in the Explorer tree under their corresponding recipe. Here you can see the three procedures that we added. Note that by default a section node also appears in the tree. Sections can be useful for splitting long recipes into groups of related procedures. If desired, the section node can be hidden by visiting Edit Preferences and unclicking this checkbox. Now that we've added the main procedures, the next step is to declare the main equipment that will execute the procedures. You can do that by double-clicking on the procedure in the Explorer tree, or by selecting the procedure in the Procedures list, and then clicking the Edit Procedure button. From this dialog, select the Main Equipment Pool tab in order to add the equipment. For this first procedure, select the Blending Tank, MT1. Then click the Add Equipment button to add it to the Equipment Pool. At this point, it is important to mention that if you have defined multiple facilities, you first have to select the facility containing the equipment you want to use from the Facilities list here. Another important thing to mention is the concept of an Equipment Pool. In Schedule Pro, you can add multiple pieces of equipment to an Equipment Pool in order to carry out the same procedure. If you define a multiple unit Equipment Pool, the program will select the first available equipment item from that pool in order to carry out that procedure. If multiple equipment items are available, the program's selection algorithm will choose the available item that is closest to the top of this list. This can have an impact on the way you run your batches, but I'll discuss that in detail at a later stage. Now that we have assigned tank MT1 to procedure P1, let's assign storage tank ST101 to procedure P2. Following the same steps as before, we will select Procedure P2 this time, and then click the Edit Procedure button. Moving to the Main Equipment Pool tab, we can now select ST101. Now let's add Filler 1 to Procedure P3. In the Explorer tree, Notice that the procedures now display the procedure name, procedure description, and the main equipment item that is used to carry out each procedure. Now that we have finished defining the procedures of the recipe, we can proceed to define the operations. Let's begin with P1. As you can see, when you select a procedure in the Explorer tree, its operation sequence is displayed on the right side of the window. Furthermore, Every procedure is automatically assigned a new operation called OP1. Let's begin by editing this operation, which we can do by selecting it and clicking the Edit Operation button. In this dialog that pops up, there are several tabs that are important to mention. Through the General tab, we can change the name of the operation and other descriptive information. Here, let's change the name from OP1 to Charge Water. Next, let's visit the Duration tab in order to specify how long this operation takes. For this operation, let's specify a duration of 30 minutes. Finally, let's visit the Scheduling tab where we can specify when an operation takes place in relation to the batch's other processing steps. Here, you can see that by default, this operation coincides to the batch start time since it is the first operation within this procedure. This default specification is correct for this procedure, so let's click OK to exit this dialog. Notice that the operation's name has been updated, and its duration corresponds to the duration that we just specified. This concludes Part 1 of this tutorial. Please make sure to watch Part 2, where I will finalize this Schedule Pro example. Thank you.